So Eddie Hearn and Callis Sowell just held a press conference to announce that the Chris Eubank Jr. Conor Ben fight has been postponed. Now in the press conference, Eddie Hearn tried to infer that he and Kala took this action because it's the right thing to do on moral grounds almost to ensure the safety of the fighters and clear up any controversy before they proceed. But I don't believe him. I think this is just a PR exercise. Reason I say this is just yesterday, Eddie Hearn said in an interview that this positive test actually occurred several weeks ago and that all parties were informed of the situation at the time. So if you had any misgivings about the safety of the fighters or the moral aspect of the situation, then why would you wait up until two days before the fight to pull the plug? That don't make any sense. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason that Eddie Hearn has pulled the plug on this fight and postponed it is because the mirror, I believe it was, exposed the fact that there was a positive test. I think that if they hadn't exposed it, the fight would have gone ahead on Saturday. And we really have to ask questions about the British board as well, because if they were informed of the situation several weeks ago, then why did they wait up until now before saying that they wouldn't sanction the bout? What's that all about? That just seems like PR from them as well. Had the situation not been exposed by that journalist in the mirror, would the British board have sanctioned the fight on Saturday? I suspect they would have done. So everybody just seems to be doing damage limitation as far as I'm concerned. Eddie Hearn coming out saying, oh, Conor Ben hasn't been suspended and this, that, and the other. Well, my understanding of the protocol with regards to positive tests and the British Boxing Board of Control is that when a fighter tests positive, they have to then test the B sample in order for the British board to actually sanction the fighter, as in punish them. But the thing is, even though the B sample only takes 24 to 48 hours to come back, for some bizarre reason that nobody's ever been able to explain to me, the legal situation surrounding the B test often drags on for weeks, months, or even years. And there was a Thomas Hauser article which was written on Boxing Scene very shortly after Dylan White tested positive in the run-up to the Oscar Rivas fight, where he mentions this. He said at the time, it can take sometimes months or years for the situation regarding the B sample to be uh, clarified and for the fighter to then be punished by the British board. What on earth is all that about? I mean, that just seems like a massive loophole in the system, which allows fighters who have, I guess, sufficient legal clout to go into fights dirty. Because until you resolve the situation with a B sample, it seems as per British Boxing Border Control Protocol, they can't stop the fight. But then you have the situation here where, according to Eddie Hearn, the British board don't recognize VADA. They only recognize UCAD, the UK anti-doping. So if they don't recognize VADA, why would they refuse to sanction this fight here with Conor Ben based on what VADA found in his test? That don't make no sense, Eddie. So there's a whole leap of smoke and mirrors going up at this point. Everybody's talking rubbish. It's all damage limitation. Everybody trying to protect their reputations and what have you. If Eddie Hearn cared that much about clarity and not wanting to put any fighter in jeopardy, then why was he happy to go ahead with the Dylan White Oscar Rivas fight? Why didn't he pull the plug on that one? Eddie Hearn has a long history of being insincere with regards to PEDs in boxing. I remember years ago, when he was with his mate Tony Bellew, and he was saying how all drug cheats should be banned for life, etc. I never believed Eddie when he said all that. And I got some flack at the time for it, but I never believed him. I always saw that as a cheap, hollow virtue signal by Eddie Hearn. And I was proven to be right because after that, he went on and signed Luis Ortiz, who'd failed drug tests. He worked with Alexander Povetkin. He obviously worked with Dylan White, who'd failed a test. Earlier on in his career, he worked with Jarrell Miller, right? Promoted Miller for a time when Miller had already failed tests previously in his career. So Hearn never meant any of that stuff. All the high horse virtue signaling about PD, he never meant any of that. He was just being opportunistic and using it as an opportunity to take shots at other promoters. That's all it ever was. Because when the shoe's been on the other foot and when his guys tested positive, Eddie Hearn wants to press ahead with the fight. And there's a very funny clip, by the way, which somebody posted in my Element group. And it was an interview that Hearn did in the immediate wake of the Demetrius Andrade 
Billy Joe Saunders fight falling through when Saunders tested positive. And in that interview, Eddie Hearn says, what's the point of having VADA testing if you're just going to ignore the positive test results? Because there were some people uh, saying that Hearn should just let Andrade fight Billy Joe Saunders anyway, even though Saunders tested positive. At the time, Saunders was still promoted by Frank Warren. Okay. And obviously Andrade was promoted by Eddie Hearn. So there were people saying, oh, you should just let him fight anyway. And Hearn said, that's ridiculous. We pay for VADA testing. Why would we ignore what VADA have said and go ahead with a fight? That makes the testing totally pointless. Well, uh, in the Dylan White situation, of course, he tried to press ahead. Well, he did press ahead and had the fight anyway. So he, he contradicted himself there. Obviously, in the Dylan White situation, it was UCAD rather than VADA that found the banned substance in Dylan White's sample. And in this situation here, as I say, with Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr., I have no doubt in my mind that if that journalist hadn't exposed the story, the fight would be happening on Saturday. I'm not particularly disappointed. I mean, I would have watched it out of just curiosity, but the fact that it's been postponed, even if, if it got outright cancelled, I'm not going to be losing any sleep over that. I always found it to be a weird fight. This whole drug testing farce reminds me of a line from one of my favorite films, Gangs of New York, where there's a character, William Tweed, who's a corrupt politician, it's actually based on a real historical figure known as Boss Tweed. And there's a part where he says, the appearance of the law must be upheld, especially when it's being broken. <laughs> and that really reminds me of the way drug testing is conducted in boxing with people saying, oh, we've got VADA testing and we've got this and that. It's like the VADA testing is just a smokescreen to give people the appearance that we're trying to crack down on drug cheats and all this kind of stuff. But when one of your fighters actually test positive, you want to go ahead with a fight anyway. Again, the appearance of the law must be upheld, especially when it's being broken. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.